HTML or hypertext markup language, which is a language that we can use to describe the structure of the web page. All of the buttons and the text and the forms and other parts of the web page that the users ultimately sees and interact with. Our very first HTML page is going to look a little something like this. It is going to be text-based code that we write that a web browser like Safari or Chrome or Firefox is then able to look at, first understand and display to the user. So let's take a look at this page one line at a time and get an understanding for how it works. Even if you don't quite understand all the nuance of the syntax, there are probably a couple of things that stand out to you. You might notice the word title, which probably reflects the title of the web page, for example, which in this case appears to be word hello. And then down further below, we see that we have the body of the web page that seems to contain the words hello world. So what is this web page actually going to look like? Well, let's take a look at it. We'll go ahead and open up a text editor. You can use any text editor you want. But for this course, I'm going to use Microsoft Visual Studio Code. And I'm just going to open up a new file that I'm just going to call hello.html. Inside of hello.html, I'm going to write the same HTML that we just saw a moment ago. And we'll explain each of these lines in due time. But recall that we had a title of the page that said something like hello and then body of the page where we said something like hello world, for example. So this is our very first HTML page. And if I go ahead and open the HTML page as my opening hello.html, for example, inside of a web browser, what I will see is something like this. In the body of the page, I see the words hello world. And if you notice up here at the top of my web browser, I see the title bar where I have the title for this page, which in this case is just the word hello. So this is our very first web program that we have been able to develop just using HTML. And now let's explore in more detail how exactly this program works. So here again was the web page that we were just looking at. And this very first line here, doc type HTML, is what we might call a doc type declaration. It is a way of telling the web browser what version of HTML we are using in this particular web page. Because depending on the version of HTML, the web browser might want to display different information or it might need to parse the page a little bit differently. Each version of HTML has had a slightly different way of indicating that version. But this line here, doc type HTML is our way of saying that this HTML page is written using HTML5, the latest version of HTML. After that, our HTML page is structured as a series of nested HTML elements, where an HTML element describes something on this page. And we might have elements that are inside of other elements. Each of those elements is indicated by what we are going to call an HTML tag, enclosed using those angle brackets. And right here, we will see the beginning of the HTML tag, which means that this is the beginning of the HTML content of our page. Down below, this slash HTML means that this is the end of the HTML content of the page. And in between is the actual HTML content of the page, which might include other HTML elements. You might also notice that in this HTML tag, we have specified what we are going to call an HTML attribute, some additional information that we are giving about this tag. In particular, we are giving it a lang or language attribute, which is equal to en or English. They just tell the web browser or anyone looking at the HTML of this page that this page is written in a language and it is English. And this is helpful for search engine. For example, now inside the HTML body of the page, we have a number of different elements that are going to describe what we want on this page, starting with the head section of the web page. And here we see the title tag again indicated by the word title in those angle brackets, followed by the end of the title tag indicated by a slash before the title. And in between the two title tags is the word hello, which means the title of this page should be the word hello. And that's all information we have in the head of this page. For now, all the OAPs needs to know is that it has a title and the title is the word hello. Next up comes the body of the page, again indicated by a body tag. 
and that ends with a tag with slash body, meaning this is the end of the body of the page. And the body of the page is just the visible part of the page that the user can see. And what do we want inside the body of the page? For now, we just want the text, hello world. That's all there really is to this HTML page. We specified in the header that there is a title of the page called hello. And inside the body, we are saying the page should say the words, hello world. And if you want to visually think about the way that all these elements are structured, it can sometimes be helpful to think about an HTML page in terms of a tree-like structure that we called the document object model or DOM. And so here, for example, is what the DOM for this web page might actually look like. Here on the left is the HTML content that we just saw a moment ago. And over here in the right is the DOM, the document object model. The tree-like structure that describes how all these HTML elements are related to each other. So we start off here with the HTML element. And this parent element, so to speak, has two child elements within it, a head element and a body element. We can see here we are inside of HTML. We have a head section and a body section. And the indentation here that we are including in the HTML text, it is not actually necessary. The web browser does not care what the indentation is. So inside of head element, we have a title element. And inside the title element, it's just the text, the word hello. And likewise, inside the body element, we also have some text, the text hello world. So thinking about HTML and HTML documents in terms of this structure can be helpful for understanding which HTML elements are inside of which other HTML elements.